do this now if you really want to survive. Hey everybody, it's Michael with Asymmetrical Preparedness. Today I'm showing you some stuff we're doing today. Working around here, right? Growing our own food, raising our own vegetables, all this stuff like that, and fruits and berries, all kinds of stuff. Sustainable living, homesteading is where it's at. Being a prepper is good, is important, but having that homesteading aspect of it really just tops it off right there. Because you can have all the food stockpiled in the world, but if you're not doing this stuff, then you know, you're know uh, you gonna be very limited in your ability to survive long term. So let's get to showing you some stuff around here. What we're doing today and what we got going on, it's this stuff, this place is already starting to look like a jungle. We already got stuff coming up all over the place. It's awesome. So today we're talking garden and building stuff, and so stay tuned. If you're gardening or growing anything, you gotta do this. These are big sacks of coffee grounds that we got. We stopped by a one of those coffee places, the little stands, you know, for um, some smoothies. And um, somebody, the, the person that the lady mentioned, she said something about grounds. And I'm like, oh, what do you do with your old grounds? And I don't know if you guys know this, probably some of you probably do, but she's like, oh yeah, we just throw them in these bags and throw them under the porch over there. So uh, she's like, you're free to take them. So these big bags, um, oh yeah, that's, that's probably about 10 pounds of coffee grounds. We had six of those. So like 60 pounds of coffee grounds. Awesome. So we put them all over the place. Raised beds, put some there in our new strawberries, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, but blueberries, blueberries love the coffee grounds. So with that said, let's talk about, I'll show you the tomatoes or the, or the strawberries. So as you saw here before, this had two raspberries in it. Well, that's not the best thing for raspberries, right? The location, how they spread, how they grow, stuff like that. So I pulled them out and I put them into our new berry area that we're not going to call berry area because it sounds like dairy air. <laughs> we're going to figure out an area, what we're going to call that area. My wife laughs every time I call it a berry area. So, um, but yeah, four new strawberries in there. And then I moved the other two here. I'll show you. Before I forget, because I usually do it till the end of the video. If you guys, if, if you guys enjoy the videos, um, if you're learning stuff from it, if you're enjoying it, if you're getting entertainment value, whatever the reason, please subscribe. It's down there. Hit the like button. That's that thumbs up down there. Comment on the videos, share the videos, talk about the videos to other people. Um, and yeah, spread the love so that we can grow the channel to reach more people. That's what really growing the channel is about. So please help me out with the algorithm. We know what that's like. Please do the things. I love you guys. Thank you. Before I show you the berry area, this is our other strawberry bed. So there's six strawberries in this bed and then there's the uh, four over there. So there's 10 strawberry plants. I'm looking forward to that. So let's go over here to the berry area. <laughs> um, and yeah, coffee grounds on the huckleberries. As you see, a lot of coffee grounds on the huckleberries. I'm trying to get them to grow. Those are the ones I dug out of the woods and replanted. But so over here, this was, we thought, that stuff growing there, we thought was elderberry. Come to find out, it is Japanese knotweed which has medicinal properties. So we're leaving some of it there. But this area here we cleaned out, um, as you can see here, kind of this, this rectangle area, this, you can see that's cleared. That is going to be, I'm gonna build an enclosure there, a netted in enclosure for our berries so the birds don't get to them. So we're gonna be working on building that. But first off, so we'll have, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, we'll have five um, raspberries in there and about six, one, two, three, four, five, yeah, probably six more blueberries. But what we got so far is we got raspberry, raspberry, and then the two that you see there, just little sticks that are starting to grow, you know, pretty well. Those are from that one little bed I mentioned. So we replanted up here in the berry area and two new blueberries. So we still have to get one more raspberry and probably four more blueberry bushes to put in this area. And then I will work on building the enclosure. 
I got to build it so you can get around the outside, <coughs> the back side of the berry bushes also so you can pick. Um, so it'll be much wider than the area where the berries are. And then this area here will be all mulched in. We'll get this uh, black mulch that we got here um, that we get for free all uh, mulched in. So that'll look really nice when it's done. New project for the day. So what we're doing here is we're going to build a new raised bed. First I want to show you, people ask me, should I have a, a worm farm to raise worms? Well, we're just collecting some of the worms from the tops or the um, turf that we're digging out. And there's worms all over the place. There's a huge one. Yeah, so there's lots of worms. So we're collecting a bunch of the worms in there. And then we're going to put them in different raised beds. But what we're going to do is here is we have some of these leftover um, tiles from a metal roof. The metal roof um, panels. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a raised bed uh, using them and um, chain link fence posts. And then what I'm going to do is drill holes in the sides and we're going to bailing wire them to the posts. So right now we're removing sod from the area and then we will put down um, some, probably put down some mesh um, first so moles and stuff like that don't dig up through it. And then we'll probably lay down some cardboard, we'll put some mulch in, we'll put some um, coals from the, our campfire, and then we'll start building it up with some organic material, fill it with topsoil, and good to go. But anyway, it's going to be from there to down here where you see this one. And it's going to be about that wide, and you see how tall it's going to be. It's going to be, you know, a panel tall. So right now we're removing all the sod in this area, and this area gets really good sun. So it's going to be a really good raised bed. And it's in between the two. You see that um, fig tree. And so the raised bed is going to end like right here. So it'll still have plenty of room for the fig tree to do its thing. And then down here is the other fig tree. And this is going to end right here where you see us starting to do the sod. So that's our one of our projects for the day. We got all the different panels laid out. We got the mattock that we're removing the tops or the turf with. And yeah, it's going to be a good project. It's a little bit of redneck engineering here with these panels. So it's going to be fun. And continue with us and check out how it goes. Update on the project though. We got all the turf and the wheelbarrow you see. And the messy building area. I got two posts in the ground ready. Um, and I was looking for wood, but all I had was pressure treated um, 4x4s and 4x6s. I didn't want to put them on the inside. Uh, and putting them on the outside, I would have dug a bunch of holes and it would have been a pain in the rear. So I'm just going to use these um, chain link fence posts, put them in the ground, and then um, drill holes in these roofing panels you see here. And then use baling wire to tie them in really nice and tight to the posts. So those posts are nice and deep, nice and solid. And what I'm going to do is start at this end and I'm just going to start building my way that end until I get to the proper length and then we'll start doing the other stuff for the raised bed. I do have some um, mesh stuff over here for keeping moles out. Now the green stuff here you can see I don't think is small enough um, mesh, small enough holes to keep moles out. So what I may do is I may overlay another area over it and we'll put cardboard down and etc stuff. So I'll figure out something and we'll be showing you that. So that's up in the air right now. So building this raised bed, I wanna show you guys a little bit more of actually how I'm doing it. So I got these, I'll show you down here like that, these roofing panels. What I'm doing is I'm poking holes in them, just using an old screwdriver. Sit it on the ground, sit it like this. I use them all, poke the hole in it. But I'm doing that on each side. And then what I got going on here is I will show you right about here. There we go. The panel. Turn the camera. There you go. So this first panel we got going on here is solid, rock solid. What I did is I put the post in the ground really deep, nice and solid. Put this post in the ground really deep, nice and solid. Fence or the roofing panel. Just poked holes in it, like I said. Use some baling wire. That's the baling wire. 
Got it here. Cut it to lengths about, you know, about yay long. And then wrapped it through the holes, pulled it nice and tight, and then used some pliers to tighten it down, to torque it down. So the panel's held in place really nice and tight. So this is a really good base. And what I'm doing is I'm working from here and I'm working that direction. When I get to the end, that'll be how long the raised bed is. And then we'll start working on um, the netting or the, the mesh down and the cardboard and the organic materials, the mulch, all that stuff, building the bed up. But I wanted to show you guys that. That's how I'm doing it. So over back over here, I'm working on, let me see if you can see the, there it is. Uh, there it is, yeah, this post. So this is for the next piece. The next piece will go right about there. So you can see it right there to the end. Just gonna take the belling wire now, start belling wiring it together after I poke holes in this end. Um, I suggest poking the holes from the outside in so that this, this uh, the material that's sticking out here is really sharp. You don't want it on the outside. You don't want kids rubbing up against it, animals, anything like that. So punch from the, in, from the outside in. That way that stuff and all these excess wires and stuff like that are gonna be the inside. They're gonna be covered up with dirt anyway. So it won't matter. So I said, that's what I recommend. So this is a really cool project. It's a beautiful day out here today. We're gonna get it done. We probably won't be able to finish the bed today because we gotta get some topsoil and stuff like that to finish it. But anyway, stay tuned. Some lessons learned about this. Let's talk about it. So on the ends here, I realized that you can see here how there's double. So what I suggest doing if you're doing this project like this is put the panels up at the same time, run one bailing wire through them instead of the two that I did. Lesson learned, save bailing wire and it would look cleaner. So this end, I'm just gonna have to make do with what it is. Um, make sure things are level as you're going. Make sure things are the same width as you're going, especially if you're doing multi-piece items. And then when I get all done with this, I'll probably just, uh, I may hacksaw this off, the extra height. I'm um, not really worried about that and all this extra little metal, these sharp edges and stuff like that. Take care of those so nobody gets cut on. But another lesson learned is, um, like right here, on this side, what I did is I poked the holes thinking just attach this one panel to the post. Then I realized do both panels at the same time through onto the post. So that's a lesson learned. Make sure that your gap, it doesn't have to be perfect, it's a raised bed. And if the post is behind that gap anyway, no dirt or anything like that, that's like that is gonna come out. But, and here, as you see where I poke the holes are a little too far from the post. I'll still be able to make it work, but that's a lesson learned. So on this panel, we're poking the holes in right now to add this panel. So that's some of the lessons learned and the progress so far. Also, as you're going, what I'm doing is I'm only putting one um, tie down on the panels until I get it all built so that I can maneuver it around, you know, tilt it up and down as I need, and then, um, once it's completely all formed, then I'll go back through and I'll belling wire all of it so it's nice and totally solid. So that's some of the lessons learned so far. Things like building this berry area that we still have to figure out a better name for, like I talk about in this video. We have one, two blueberries, and we got right here one, two, three, four raspberries in here so far. We're gonna be building the structure for it, putting net over it so the birds don't eat the berries, right? They don't steal our harvest. Um, and what I think I'm gonna do for the door is I'm just gonna cut the netting, put a tie, you know, a zip tie a stick across the bottom of it or some weight to hold it down. And then anytime we wanna go in, all we gotta do is lift it up because the birds aren't gonna find the little tiny holes. Um, yeah, they're just not going to. So it's not really that big of a concern. But having this ability to grow things, especially things like this, that reproduce year after year after year that you don't have to do more about. You don't have to replant. You don't have to do all this complicated stuff. So that's the way I highly recommend you go for part of your garden. Very important. Raised bed, complete, all built 
and good to go. Looking nice, turned out really well. So now we are, I don't know why the screen went fuzzy like that for a sec. I accidentally put some mulch in, but we gotta put a cardboard down first. So we're gonna put cardboard down and then we're gonna lay mulch and a bunch of other good organic material stuff. This thing is solid. This thing is rock solid, it'll last for years. This raised bed right here shows you that you can really make use of stuff you have laying around. Whether it's corrugated paneling, whether it's spare metal roof panels, whether it is wood, whether it is cinder blocks, rocks you can stack up and put dirt in the middle of, anything. There are so many different ways to make raised beds or use containers for gardening. In ground is great. You got property, you got tractors, you got rototiller, stuff like that. That works fine um, in situations. As long as you mend the soil, take good care of it. I prefer raised beds, so that's what you see around my property. For me, it's easier. I just like it. It's just what I like. So, yeah, and just look at that stuff. That's just all stuff we cleaned up around the yard. It just, you know, pine needles, pine cones, blackberry bush stalks, just junk. It's just organic junk. You throw in there, it'll compost down great. Um, and yeah, so we'll be throwing some topsoil in there and uh, it'll be doing really well. So I'm really looking forward to this place becoming more of a jungle. Uh, I'm trying to create our own little like Garden of Eden here where it's just gonna be edible stuff growing everywhere. It's gonna be amazing. So we're gonna talk about that a lot and show you a lot of updates as we're coming, as stuff's growing up and then harvesting and all the good things. So do it yourselves though, please. Still making progress. There's the raised bed. All built and now we're filling it. Got a lot of mulch in there and stuff we cleaned up around the yard that we had in a thing that we were just gonna burn in the fire pit. But hey, why not throw it here in the raised bed? Really good. Just a bunch of organic material that will rot down. Banana peel in there, stuff like that. Yeah, I'm really happy with this. I can't wait to get, uh, we're going to put the rest of the mulch we have in there, the free mulch, and then we are going to fill up the rest with a mushroom compost topsoil mix, and then we will plant it. So look forward to that. We'll have to continue that in another video, the filling it with uh, topsoil because I don't have any right now. But let's talk about some other things. All right, so to wrap it up, raised bed built and partially filled. Got some good progress done today. And replanted, transplanted the um, raspberry bushes to the berry area. Put four um, strawberry bushes in that little bed thing. We cleaned up a bunch of the um, knotweed, made that area nicer. Put in the two blueberries over there, the two raspberries. So now we got four raspberries and two blueberries in that area right now, ready to go. We're going to continue working on that. We put a bunch of those coffee grounds all over the place. Um, that's going to be really good. So please do these things. Grow your own food. Raise your own animals. Be self-sufficient. Take care of yourselves. Provide for your families. I love you guys. Have a wonderful day. Blessings to you and yours.